This is section 35 on the division of whole numbers, and this is going to wrap up chapter 3 for us. So we can look at division uh, modeled in three ways. We have the set model, which is often called the partition or the partitive model. Um, in this model, you take a total and you split it into equal sized groups. That's typically how people think about division. They think of division as in dividing into groups. The quotient of the division problem, which we know is the answer, comes from answering the question, how many are in each group? So I went ahead and tried to do a color-coded example here for you. So 10 divided by 2. If you looked at this in terms of a partitive model, that would be 10 total divided or split into two equal sized groups. So you can see in pink, I hope you can kind of tell that that's pink there, that's split into two equal sized groups. The quotient is how many are in each group. In this case, there are five in each group. So a word problem that goes along with that, I kind of had that as an afterthought, so I tried to squeeze that in here. If you have 10 cookies and you split it equally between two friends, how many cookies does each friend get? That would be a, a partitive approach. Another type of model for division is repeated subtraction. Now that really shouldn't surprise you since division is the inverse of multiplication and multiplication had repeated addition. So it kind of stands to reason that maybe division is going to be repeated subtraction. So in this model, we repeatedly subtract off equal sized groups <clears throat> and the quotient comes from answering the question of how many groups did you take away? So doing 10 divided by two again, to show you the difference with the same problem, <clears throat> we get 10 total and we repeatedly subtract two until nothing is left. And my quotient is how many times did I have to repeatedly subtract that? So here's my total of 10 and I'm taking away two at a time. And I have to do that five times until nothing is left, right? That's how many times I have to do it until nothing is left. So a word problem, you know, what scenario would that go with? Well, that would be like having 10 cookies. And let's say that you're going to sell the cookies in two cookie bundles. How many bundles can you make? See, that's not a, that's not a partition. That's not dividing the 10 into two groups. That's dividing the 10 into groups of size two. So it's going to be really important that we be able to um, identify when we look at a specific problem, which type it's leaning toward. Okay. So I said that there was three, three ways. So the third one is missing factor. Um, this is a really good one because it relates it back to multiplication. That's going to be really useful because that's how a lot of kids are going to know their division facts. They're going to know them you know, because they know their multiplication facts. So 10 divided by two, they're going to think, you know, what times two is going to give me 10 or two times what is going to give me 10. So, um, <clears throat> and yeah, like I said, it's helpful when transitioning between, you know, from multiplication to talking about division. The division algorithm says that given any whole numbers, A and B, where B is not zero, there exists a unique whole number, or sorry, there exists unique whole numbers, Q for the quotient and R the remainder, such that this equation is true for R between zero and B. Now, here's what all this is saying. This is just a super sexy way of doing <clears throat> the whole, let me just do it with a smaller example. You know, if you divide 5 into 7, it goes one time with a remainder of 2. And you guys remember how to check your answers with these? How you could always multiply your 
quotient times your divisor. So you could do five times one and add the remainder and you get your dividend. That's what this is saying. The dividend is the quotient times the divisor plus the remainder. That's all this is saying. Now this business over here, this little inequality, um, is because your remainder, your remainder is always going to be smaller than the divisor, but larger than zero. Well, it could be equal to zero. But if your remainder, like this one, if it's bigger than five, well, then my quotient wasn't big enough. I could have gone, that five could have divided into that number more times. So that's all that this, you know, all this stuff is saying here. The properties of whole number division, these are going to be similar to the ones for subtraction in that there's not any, but I wanted to go ahead and show you why. The whole numbers for division are not closed because you cannot divide any two whole numbers and always get another whole number. So a counterexample, two divided by five is not a whole number, so they're not closed. Whole number division is not commutative. Okay. Those quotients, not the same thing. It is not associative. Those two quotients are not the same thing. And it does not have an identity element. Yes, that one is 10, but the identity element requires that it work both ways, that you be able to divide both ways with that identity, um, yeah, with that identity element. So, let's talk about division with zero here, because back here, it was mentioned that those um, whole numbers A and B, we said that B can't be zero. It's because we know that you can't divide by zero, but why? These three division problems, four divided by zero, zero divided by four, and zero divided by zero, are often misunderstood. A lot of times students will just say, well, they're all zero. No, in fact, there are three different problems with three different solutions. So let's look at them individually here. Now, before I start, let me just go ahead and show you here that I have color coded this here for your viewing pleasure. Um, 10 divided by two equals five can be written as its related multiplication problem of you know, just reading it from right to left now. 5 times 2 equals 10. <clears throat> so keep that in mind. So let's start with 4 divided by 0 is equal to what? That means what times 0 equals 4. Okay, so what number times 0 is going to give you 4? There's not anything. There's no number that when multiplied by zero gives you four. We say that one's a no solution or undefined. You could say either one, undefined or no solution. So that's four divided by zero. That also would work for five divided by zero or seven divided by zero or 923 divided by zero, right? Because whatever number's right here in blue, there's nothing times zero is going to give you that number. <clears throat> 0 divided by 4 equals what? Okay, so rewriting it as its related multiplication problem, we have what times 4 gives you 0. Okay, that one's easy, right? The answer is 0, because 0 times 4 is 0. Okay, so that means 0 divided by 4 is 0. That's going to work for 5, 6, 917, 1028, what if both of these are zero? So what I saw from the first one was that if zero was my second number, my divisor, that the answer was undefined or no solution. If the zero is first, you know, if it's my dividend, then the answer was zero. So which one's it going to be if they're both zero? Well, let's look. Zero divided by zero equals what? So that means what times zero gives you zero? Here's the thing. For the first one, there was no answer. For the second one, it was just zero. This one, any number will work. So there's no unique solution. We say that there is an indeterminate, that this is indeterminate form, 
because no unique solution can be determined. So indeterminate as in not able to be determined. Now notice how I highlighted the word unique. If we go back to that division algorithm back here, the division algorithm states that we have to get a unique answer for every division problem. So because there's no unique answer here, we say that a single answer cannot be determined for this. So in general, some non-zero number divided by zero is undefined. Zero divided by something non-zero is just going to be zero. And zero divided by zero is indeterminate. We cannot determine a single answer. Now, here's the thing. On your calculator, if you do 4 divided by 0, it gives you an error. 0 divided by, oops, 0 divided by 4, we get 0. 0 divided by 0, we get another divide by 0 error. That doesn't mean it's undefined. It just means that the calculator just says, hey, if you try to divide by 0, I'm going to give you the same answer no matter what. So the calculator doesn't distinguish between indeterminate and undefined. Okay, before we move on to the division algorithms, let's look at some problems and classify them. So this is going to be on a separate page that I will scan along with, um, with the notes. So these are all division problems. So what I want you to do is pause the video and classify each one of these as either partitive or repeated subtraction. All right, so I'm gonna read them to you just in case you have trouble seeing them. A company shipped 192,600 bushels of wheat in nine railroad cars. Find the amount of wheat shipped in each car. So here's my total. So I'm shipping this wheat in nine railroad cars. Am I repeatedly subtracting nine from this? Or am I splitting this into nine groups? Well, this is partitive because I'm going to be splitting this into nine groups. So I'm splitting that total into nine equal groups. All right, the next one. A chef purchases a roast that weighs 10 pounds. How many two pound servings can be cut from this roast? So is that partitive or is that repeated subtraction? <clears throat> Am I taking this total of 10 and splitting it into... <coughs> I got a frog in my throat today. Am I splitting this into two equal groups or am I repeatedly taking away two? Well, for this one, I'm repeatedly taking away two, right? I'm cutting away two pounds. So this is going to be a repeated subtraction. So I'm repeatedly taking away 2 from 10 until nothing is left. All right. A retail outlet can store 270 tires equally among 15 shelves. How many tires can be stored on one shelf? All right. Is this partitive or is this repeated subtraction? Starting with 270. Am I splitting it into 15 equal groups or am I repeatedly taking away 15 until nothing is left? Well, I'm splitting it into 15 equal size groups. The shelves are the groups. So this one's a partitive. So I'm splitting 270 into 15 equal sized groups.
Number four, individual cereal boxes contain two ounces of cereal. How many individual boxes can be filled with 600 ounces of cereal? So if you haven't already, if you didn't know where to start before, <clears throat> now that I've done three of them, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do the rest of them. See if you can classify it as either partitive or repeated subtraction. And I'm just trying to write a quick little explanation as to why I'm choosing, you know, whichever one I'm choosing. So with this one, I've got a total of 600 ounces. And am I splitting this into two equal groups, or am I repeatedly taking away two? Well, I'm repeatedly taking away two because this two ounces, I'm repeatedly filling two ounce boxes over and over again until this is depleted. So this is gonna be repeated subtraction. So I'm repeatedly taking away two from 600 until nothing is left. Number five, Carissa is building bookcases that are three feet wide. How many complete shelves can be cut from a 15 foot long board? All right, so is this partition or is this repeated subtraction? 15 feet is my total board length. So am I splitting this into three pieces or am I repeatedly cutting three feet away from it? Well, I'm repeatedly cutting three feet away. So this one's repeated subtraction as well. Because this is a 15 foot board, but I want each one to be three feet wide. So how many shelves can she cut? She can cut five. So I'm actually cutting into five pieces. So this is 15, cut off a three foot section, cut off another three foot section, another one, another one, another one. And you do this five times. Three charities work together to raise $548,000. If the money is split equally between the charities, how much will each charity get? So, partitive or repeated subtraction? Am I splitting 548,000 into three equal groups or am I repeatedly taking away three until nothing's left? This one's, look at that, that one's got a keyword in there. See, it says split. So that's kind of cool. That's oh, an indicator there that it's a partitive. So we're splitting the 548,000 into three equal groups. A bag of rice contains 18 ounces of rice. How many three ounce portions can be served from this bag? This one's very similar to the cereal, right? Because we are taking out three ounces at a time. This one's repeated subtraction. Now, it's worth pointing out at this point that there is a little trick that you can look for, okay? Look at with repeated subtraction, my two numbers, right? 10 and 2. Um, over here, repeated subtraction, 600 ounces, 2 ounces. 15 foot board, 3 feet wide. 18 ounces three ounces. So look at all those underlined in red. Now let's go back and look at the partitive ones. I'm going to do those in blue. We had 192,600 bushels and nine cars. 270 tires, 15 shelves. $548,000 and three charities. What do you notice? With the repeated subtraction, the units are the same. 
See, repeated subtraction, pounds, pounds, ounces, ounces, feet, feet, ounces, ounces. But with the partitive, the units are different. Bushels, railroad cars, tires, shelves, um, dollars, and charities. So it's worth noting that um, as a kind of a, just a little quick way <clears throat> of maybe, you know, figuring it out. Um, okay, so this last one, a car costs $9,216 and has to be paid off in 48 equal monthly payments. How much is the payment? All right. Am I repeatedly taking away $48 from this or am I splitting this into 48 groups? Well, look at the units. This one is dollars and this one's payments. If this said a car costs $9,216 and you pay off $48 a month, how many months do you have to pay? That would be repeated subtraction. But as it stands, this is a partitive because you're splitting this into 48 equal groups. This one was 18 minus 3 minus 3. And that had to be six times. So this was just to try to help you guys see word problems um, and to figure out, you know, how the problem is worded that um, determines how you are going to model it for kids because they're not all um, partitive. They're not all splitting into, you know, equal sized groups. Okay, so I think that's probably a good stopping point for, um, for this section. So we'll go ahead and say that this, this part is done. And then the next part we'll do our division algorithms.